I love, I love this lesson. It's so good. I, every time I've taught it, I don't know how many times I've taught it now. Um, it, it's, it's always a great moment to be able to say, not everything in mathematics has a, a, an application out in the real world that is so obvious. Um, it's actually a, an interesting kind of exercise to be able to say, things that we often don't think have applications out in the real world, they often do, they're just kind of, you know, hidden away or we haven't discovered them yet. Do you want to just grab a seat there? Thank you. Uh, but other ones, it's like, yeah, it's there staring you in the face and we've been taking advantage of it for decades, sometimes even centuries. So satellite dishes, satellite dishes, every single one is what we call a parabolic dish, a parabolic dish, which is to say, if you were to uh, put a cross section across the middle through that, that center point there, um, the cross section would be a parabola. Uh, I know it doesn't look sort of super parabola-ish, but that's because what we're focused on there is just like this bit down the bottom, right? So it's part of a really big parabola, as it were. Um, if you have a look at a headlight, and I know this is not an amazing image, but the one that give, gave me sort of the best view into the actual thing, you'll notice that all headlights are also the same. It's easier to see on some than others. What you'll find is that the overall headlight, you can see that sort of, um, that curvature inside, and the actual light, the thing that produces Photons, right? Is not the whole thing, it's just something in here. That's the only spot that's actually producing light, and everything else is just reflecting it. Now, the question, of course, is why? Why do we keep using this shape over morning, over and over again? To explain why, in fact, we're going to do more than explain why. Um, we need to investigate some things about the geometry of this shape. And this is the first thing that I want you to write down, maybe beside where you've drawn your parabola. Uh, thinking about the best way to uh, write this, here's what I'm going to say, uh, four words, which is um, curved global flat local. So this is the most succinct way I can explain a particular characteristic of this shape, uh, in fact, a characteristic of a lot of the shapes that we've dealt with, uh, which is going to be the primary thing we're going to take advantage of today. What this means is, when you have a look at a parabola, overall, this is clearly a curved shape, right? But that's only because of the scale on which you're looking at it. You're looking at it, as it were, on a global scale. You're looking at a, a large part of the object. But if you were to zoom into a small section, if you were to look locally, you will observe no curve at all. And this is very easy to illustrate. I mean, you can imagine it, but we don't have to imagine it. If I take a spot like this, right? Have a look at this now. Have a look at this particular component of the parabola. Uh, you can still make out the curve, can't you? Just, barely. But if I go in a little further, do you want to, do you want to take it? No, there are no more seats left. Um, hurry up, right across, that's fine. I don't know how far, well, what's that, 0 0.51, 0 0.51. So we're sort of far in, but we're not nearly as far in as we could go. If I go in even further like that, I, what did I do? I did like two, two zooms in, right? I, well, let's have, here we go. Okay, with that there, with the ruler there, you can just barely perceive a curve, right? Just barely, but only because the ruler is there. Once I take it away, I mean, my eyes certainly cannot tell if I hadn't known from the beginning that this is curved, okay, yeah? Wait, why is that? Because we know that like a parabola has a different grade at every point. Why does it yeah. look straight? Okay, that's a great question, right? Now, let me answer that question in a second, like why, why does it become a straight object? Um, let me just point out that this is actually something in our daily experience because we live on an object that is curved globally. Like we, we actually call it a globe because it is globe shaped, but we experience it as flat because locally on the scale that we experience, it looks pretty flat out there to me, doesn't it? Okay. So this is actually a matter of scale and it's because these objects, let me zoom back out. These objects in Euclidean geometry are what we call smooth shapes, right? Think about all the shapes that you know, um, all the shapes with, with curves in them, so circles and ellipses and all that kind of thing. If you zoom in far enough, the thing that they all have in common is this. 
that while they were curved globally, they're flat locally. Okay? Now this is not always the case. This is just a bit of a side note, but there are lots of shapes in reality that are not like this. For example, what is this? What's it look like? This looks like, um, these are river deltas, right? So you've got like a, a coastline, you've got like sea somewhere down here, and this is where it's sort of going inland, okay? Now, one of the characteristic things about nature is that often it's not, you know, one thing globally and then a different thing locally. The, the further you go into this, the further you zoom in, and even when you're like on the, um, on the scale of you and I on the ground, okay? If you go and find where this water is seeping into the earth, you will find this exact shape, right? Like I could zoom in and uh, dig into some tree roots and I would find water seeping in in exactly this pattern. So it's not as though you zoom in and you get something that's dramatically simpler. In real life, often you zoom in and you just get something which is um, more and more complicated. If you're a Discworld fan, you might say it's turtles all the way down, okay? Um, we call this fractal geometry. It's all broken. That's what characterizes it, that it looks like this weird broken shape all the way, okay? So not all geometry is like this. So you need to recognize that. But when it is, we can take advantage of things. Here's how. Let's go back to here. Um, if I were to take like this portion over here, okay, and say, all right, if I zoom in far enough, it's going to look like a straight line, right? What that means is, um, and I'd love you to draw this on your parabola as well. What this means is if you take a tangent, there's my tangent, and I'm going to draw the parabola as well because in a second I'm going to turn this projector off. If you take this tangent at this point, right, remember the exercise I went through before? If I zoomed in so that all I could see was this tiny little spot, right? Because the parabola becomes more or less a straight line, you won't be able to really distinguish it from the tangent that's next to it. Does that make sense? Because the tangent is itself a straight line, okay? Which means that at that point, I can treat the parabola as if it were that tangent, okay? Um, the tangent becomes an approximation for the curve. And that's what is going to prove for us this reflective property of parabolas, okay? That this is why you'll, you'll see the picture in a minute. Why we design things using this shape because it reflects things in a certain way. So at the moment, you've got your parabola, you've got a tangent. We need to put a couple more items onto here to prove what we're after, okay? So onto here, what I'd like you to add on is the focus of this parabola. Now I'm just going to roughly place it around there will do for me, okay? 